Hi, my name is Matthew Kovach, and I'm an environmental scientist with a background in coastal resiliency and Great Lakes habitat restoration. I've worked with companies and organizations like the Nature Conservancy, and now I'm working with Lakeside to provide some enduring solutions to the long-standing problem of shoreline erosion on the western shoreline at Lakeside. I'd like to take this time to share with you some of the history and causes of this problem that Lakeside's experiencing and introduce some potential solutions to you. The problems that we're facing along the lakefront are bigger and older than anyone watching this video. Rather than serving as a finger pointing exercise, this presentation is intended to be a primer on the issues at hand so that when Lakeside hosts its community outreach programs in the following weeks, you'll already have a basic understanding of the issues and we can get right into work discussing the preferred solutions. To use a lake pun, let's dive in. Unlike oceanic coastal areas, Lake Erie's shores hold very little sand, and structures like the dock at Lakeside cause a disruption to the littoral sediment distribution process, meaning they keep sediment from being distributed naturally along the shore by the lake. Climate change is also having an impact on the shoreline erosion here, as decreased ice coverage in the winter time is resulting in increased winter storm damage. Most importantly, fluctuating water levels have increased waves hitting erodible land and unprotected soil. If you look at this progression of images from 1957 to 2019, you can see a decades-long battle between Lakeside and Lake Erie. It's a cycle of building out the shoreline, only to have it erode away again. These previous approaches that were employed were not really adequately designed or constructed in ways that work with and address the naturally occurring wave processes and coastal processes that result in shoreline movement and erosion. So how do we fix it? For all the options that I'll present here, the process is essentially the exact same. The goal is to provide a resilient solution to shoreline erosion. And to do that, we need to better understand and work with, not against, these coastal processes that are leading to erosion here. With proper design, we can create a more stable and resilient shoreline designed for future, not past conditions. So the engineering and design phase will build off of work that was done in 2018 and 2019 to achieve a holistic understanding of the natural forces at work here and advance solutions that will properly work within those conditions. Next comes the permitting phase, which could take anywhere from 1 to 12 months depending on the design. And if all moves promptly in both departments, we'll hopefully be able to start construction this time next year. So potential solutions. There's a few I'm going to address here. One of which is armor stone. Armor stone uses large collections of rocks as a breaker against eroding waves. And this is similar to what you see on the east side of the dock. Now this approach requires little regular maintenance and is very durable, but as you learned last year, the inevitable repairs will be quite costly. And since the west shore sits lower than the east, the wall that we would be creating would have to be higher and or extend further out into the lake, cutting off shoreline views and limiting water access. Another approach could be employed would be like a sandy or gravel beach. This is similar to what you see at the sailing center, and this approach creates a sand or gravel beach which protects that erodible soil. This approach is often cheaper to build as well, and it provides increased access to the water. Without a detailed survey and engineering analysis though, it's difficult to know how much this approach would cost. And while it would be relatively inexpensive to maintain, cost considerations might require sacrificing some of the green space that's currently along this western shoreline right now. Another option is soil lifts, which are packets of erosion control fabric with shrubs planted inside of that. As those shrubs grow, those roots interlock and hold soil together, which prevents those lifts themselves from eroding away. This is the lowest cost option and a very low impact restoration strategy. One of the major downsides with this alternative is that those shrubs do grow pretty tall and they would significantly disrupt the view from the shoreline. Another option would be steel revetment. This would be similar to the dock that exists at Lakeside now. And this replicates the sort of shore to water connection that you have at the dock. It provides solid protection of the lake, but it can potentially increase lakeward erosion and is the most expensive to install by far. It's not that expensive to maintain if things go well, but in the event that you need to make repairs, they are pretty costly. The last method is really just a hybrid approach that could combine all or some of these different solutions in different ways. This would be similar to what's shown in the master plan that was proposed in 2019, and this approach could kind of use a little bit of the best aspects of each of these approaches or alternatives to provide a more tailor-made solution to each section of the shoreline that you're interested in. As a community, we've shared the benefits of Lake Erie and its shores. We'd like to continue sharing them for years to come.
As such, we'd love to get your input on this matter and your thoughts on what you saw in this presentation. You can call or email the location shown on the screen, discuss anything you saw here today, or you're welcome to bring your thoughts at the community outreach meetings that are going to be coming in the following weeks. I hope you found this short presentation instructive, and we look forward to talking with all of you soon. Thanks again.